Apex Troll asked an interesting question yesterday, and it's one that's always fascinated me. Um, I first came across it actually reading Orwell uh, in 1984. It has to do with whether or not we think um, love is a greater motivator than hate. Uh, the civilization that, um, the satirical civilization that Orwell portrayed in 1984 was a civilization essentially based upon hate and a strange sort of love of the leader, an abject capitulation, a total surrender kind of love. Um, but on a day-to-day -day basis, it was hatred that motivated people. Hatred of the enemy within, hatred of the enemy without. You're surrounded by enemies and you must hate them at all times. Um, and and O'Brien, one of the main characters, asks Winston Smith, the prisoner in, uh, in 1984, what makes you think that hate is any less vital than love? All right, that's an interesting question, isn't it? Um, what's so wonderful about love, first of all, that makes it so powerful? Well, that's a very good question, isn't it? Do we ever really ask ourselves this? You know, so you get into the long conversations on what love is, say like in the symposium, um, Plato, and the various different kinds. And, you know, there's love of a human being, like when you fall madly in love. And the ancients generally were sort of wary of that sort of thing. They saw it more as a sickness than as something wonderful, uh, which we believe in the West, or we say that we believe in the West, where the ideal is to find a soulmate and be completely fulfilled by that person. The ancients didn't really see it that way, and they sort of said, well, yeah, that could happen, but the odds are stacked against Joe Blow having that in his life. So they examined all the various facets of love, and you know they, they come up with the Platonic version, agape, or whatever. Now, <clears throat> let's say that we have that. Now, I was talking yesterday about a sort of a more all-encompassing one, uh, from Nietzsche, which is love of fate, love of everything that you can't change. You don't, uh, you know, a good example is, say, living in the postmodern era like we do. Why would you love Donald Trump? Why would you love um, the amount of violence in our streets or whatever? Uh, no, 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 that's not the point. You don't love that those aspects of, of existence. You love the fact that you're stuck with it. That's essentially what it is. You love the fact that it's your fate, it's out of your control, but you live in this time, in this age, in this place, in this reality. Um, that's very all-encompassing. It's not dependent upon you meeting a certain person or a pile of specific conditions being met. Um, it might be the hardest one of all, the hardest love of all, but it's also the one that sort of is the hardest to counteract type thing. It's also the most all-encompassing, if you ask me. But what about hate? How many different kinds of hate are there? You have a person who's otherwise a normal person, but has a hate on for one particular individual. Uh, they don't hate everybody. Then you get people that sort of hate groups of people. Then you get people who hate certain things. You get people who hate all kinds of stuff. They hate somebody that they once loved. Um, they hate the human race, or they hate existence itself. Um, you know, again, a more all-encompassing hatred. Someone in a state of, I guess, Amor Fati would just love or feel love no matter what happened. It would be triggered by everything. Every love would result in any sort of experience, or any sort of experience would result in love. Um, again, bloody hard to do, but, okay, not impossible. Um, hate. Yeah, you could, I could see somebody, like, every, whenever they open their eyes, it triggers hatred in them. Everything triggers hatred. Now, what at bottom is hate? I would say that hate is not really the opposite of love. I would say that fear 
is the opposite of love. Terror. Um, hate, I think, is terror with the belief that you have weapons against what it is that you're terrified of. Take away those weapons and you have nothing but abject terror. Anxiety in its purest form. You are looking at something that is um, absolutely horrible and a terrible menace to you. An existential menace to you. Reality itself, I suppose. Existence itself. And you have no weapons against it. Um, okay, then you declare war against it and you imagine that you have weapons. Isn't that better? Is, but that's kind of a distraction, right? Uh, do I have any weapons against my own mortality? No. Do I have any weapons against my own existence? No. Do I have any weapons against um, the, the fact that the world is the way it is? No. Okay. But if I convince myself that I can actually do something about it, if I can work up a sufficient amount of hatred, I can keep that fear at bay, right? The fear at Fear of inevitability, fear of, of necessity, fear of being harmed, fear of dying, fear of um, being humiliated, fear of uh, being penniless on the street. Um, all the myriad things that one can be afraid of. Fear of a pandemic, fear of some government conspiracy trying to breed me with aliens or something like this. I, if I sort of convince myself that I can actually do something about that which I'm afraid I can either blot it out of my mind um, by convincing myself I can do something about it, um, or I can actually alter the very nature of that which I fear. Not so much that, um, not so much that um, that you can actually do something about the fact that inevitability is happening, but you can actually. I, I assume you can keep up the hatred up until the second that you die, and that would blot out the actual fear of dying. You, you know, if you've ever seen or read Moby Dick, Captain Ahab, um, he's be in the process of being killed by Moby Dick, and you know he's just saying from, I forget what he says, from hell's jaws I strike at thee, etc. It's just he goes down with absolute unmitigated hatred because of the trauma that Moby Dick has caused him. Um, I can only imagine what it's like to be in a boat that's been attacked by a gigantic whale. I can see how that could, that could traumatize you and psychologically maim you to the point where you're not really a human being anymore. And how do you deal with the memory of that having happened to you? Ah, hatred, Captain Ahab. He just keeps up the hate all of his life, the hate. But the hate has... A purpose. It's to blot out the horror. It is actually attempting to deal with the trauma that Ahab experienced. Um, it's not an end in itself. It's a means to an end. Now, we have also love, as I've mentioned before, as an antidote to horror. I could see how the both of them can be more, um, or rather can be just as effective in terms of distracting yourself from reality. But which one is actually facing reality? Which one is actually looking at things for what they really are? I would say love is. Because love is accepting and assimilating everything, or at least the love, you know, amor fati. The, you know, I hate to use these soppy terms, but almost like the highest love that there is. What's the highest hatred there is? I guess it would also be a horror fati. Hatred of fate, or miso fati, I don't know. Um, hatred of fate but you're pushing your fate away from you. You are battling against it. You are fighting against it um, with hate. Um, well, your fate is going to get you. Eventually, you're going to be 
faced with the fact that you're going down. Um, you want to go down struggling, striking back against something that simply is bigger than you. Um, and is going to win no matter what you do? Uh, or are you going to love the inevitable, your fate? Um, it's an interesting question. Which one would you rather have? Which one would you rather feel? Um, I don't know. What is the psychology of hate? As I say, I don't think that hate is a quote-unquote pure emotion in the same way that love is. Um, or at least certain types of love. I find that hate is a means of masking something else, but of course, a, a critic of my position would say love is a means of masking something else. But the objection that I would have to that is the fact that love is an acceptance or an assimilation of fate. Hatred is pushing it away. You can't push away your fate. You can accept it. Um... That's why I think that hatred, ultimately, is not quite as vital a thing as love, because it's, it's a tool as opposed to a state of being. Um, you need something in spe specifically to hate and to push away, and you have to, in some sense, believe that it's possible to push it away. You can't push away your fate. Otherwise, it wouldn't be your fate, right? You can't push away that which is beyond your control. You can't push away necessity. Um, but you can accept necessity. You can embrace necessity. You can um, go along with it. Um, you can love it. You can hate it or you can love it. But love becomes kind of an end unto itself. Whereas hatred, no. Hatred is a, is a block. Is... Hatred is ultimately futile, especially if it's hatred of existence. Because you exist, okay, and then you hate the fact that something is going to make you not exist. Um, but you will not exist. <laughs> you know, you're hating things that you might as well not bother hating, because your hate is just going to go nowhere. You're not going to win this battle. Um, whereas love, there is no battle. You want to unite with, with that which you would... If you were the hate type person, you want to unite with whatever a hate filled person wants to push away. Um, and again, I'm talking about an elevated conception of love here and a somewhat, I don't know, specific definition of hate. Um, but as I say, it's a very interesting question and it's one that I've asked myself a lot. And it's, it's also one of the more disturbing questions to ask. Um, why prefer love over hate. Uh, I think that it actually does make sense, even in a, in a completely, I don't know, philosophical sense, to ultimately say that hatred is unhealthy because it's not actually dealing with the root of the problem. The root of the problem is horror, terror, fear, panic, anxiety, all that kind of thing. Um, hatred is just a mask for that, or a bludgeon against that uh, terror. I believe that love can actually counteract the terror itself, not just keep it at arm's length. 